Hi everybody, Dave Isaacs here with you today and today I want to talk about finger style guitar and I've got a simple exercise for you called Renaissance Fair which really just involves plucking. We're going to use the thumb and primarily two fingers, index and middle, to pluck the strings. Now often when we learn finger style the first thing we learn is some kind of repeating pattern that uses the fingers in sequence but I think starting off with a simple pluck like this is a good idea because it's really a very simple motion and it takes a little less coordination than alternating fingers in different orders. So a couple of things I want you to notice to start off with. I am using a nylon string guitar, so essentially a classical guitar, and I'm holding it in classical style, meaning that the guitar is resting on my left leg. My left foot is elevated. I'm, I've got it on a footstool right now. The main thing is not so much the footstool, but the elevation of the neck, and that's why I've got the guitar sitting on this side. You certainly don't have to play it that way. You're actually going to find when it comes to finger style that there's probably more variations in technique than in any other style of playing. You'll see all different kinds of approaches and all different kinds of hand positions, and there's lots of great players that make them work very well, even using techniques that no teacher would ever teach. So you have to keep that in mind. But I'm coming from the classical perspective because there are a lot of years of thought and refinement that have gone into developing what we might call an orthodox technique. And you're certainly not obligated to stick to that, but it's based on some basic principles that I think are important to recognize. The main thing is that you want the plucking hand, in this case my right hand, to be as relaxed as possible. And so you might notice that my forearm is basically straight, my wrist is basically straight. One of the variations you'll see is that some people tend to turn the hand a little bit. So you'll have a little bit of rotation like that. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm a little more tilted this way and the angle of the guitar neck definitely comes into play here. When I've got the neck angled upwards, I can come across the strings at something of an angle and it makes it easier to pull through the string. You'll notice that I'm actually using my thumb and three other fingers, index, middle, ring. Index, middle, ring are resting, respectively, on the third, second, and first strings. And I'm just very lightly touching. Now, I've got a little bit of a fingernail. Um, they're not in great shape, but you can see there's a little bit of a crescent shape there. And a serious classical guitarist spends a lot of time on their fingernails. For me, given that I play pick style so much, I tend to tear them up. So I just try to keep them as smooth as I can, and if I'm playing more finger style, then I'm paying more attention to them. But the advantage of a nail, at least a short nail, is that when you sit on the string, you can find kind of a pocket at the left edge of the nail so that I have the flesh of my fingertip and a little bit of the nail contacting the string. And with the neck angled like this, when I pluck, the string essentially just glides off the nail. doesn't mean you need to use fingernails, and if you don't, especially if you're playing on steel strings, you're likely to develop calluses on those fingertips that will accomplish more or less the same thing. Basically having a slightly harder surface that's going to give you a little more of a clear attack. Fingertips alone, because they're more rounded, will give you a slightly softer sound. If your nails are too long, then the sound tends to get very bright. So this is all nail. This is more fingertip. And this is the blend of the two. Now, the goal here is not for you to develop the kind of precision that a classical guitarist has. That's way down the road, and you may never develop it that far, and it really may not matter. But in terms of getting started with good basic technique, I do want you to notice that when I pluck the string, I am pulling in. My knuckles are basically above the strings, and I'm going to move in a little bit so you can see this a little better. I'm not doing this. A lot of people have a tendency when they learn to play fingerstyle to pluck away. And that's not even necessarily a bad thing if your hand stays relaxed. 
The only downside is you've got a lot more ground to cover. You have to bring the hand back in and find the strings. What I'm doing is I'm resting on the string to start with, and then when I pluck, my thumb goes down and my fingers come in. So you can experiment with this. Like I said, there's lots of variations. So the placement of your hand along the string like this, whether you're resting back here, whether you are curled like this or like that, those are all variables to take into account. And ultimately what we really want is just to keep everything as loose as we can and to move as little as possible, really just as much as we need to. I'll also point out too that the difference between plucking out and plucking in, you can hear right there a very significant change in volume. I can produce a lot more sound moving this way because I'm using the entire finger. Whereas if I move out, I'm using more of my arm and hand. So the force, the energy is going towards moving my hand away instead of going right to the string. So you do need to explore, see what feels natural. Keep in mind that even if this is new to you, there's a difference between unfamiliar and just plain awkward. This would be awkward. Of course, I'm kind of bending around so everything's in the shot, but you can see how my hand definitely looks sort of twisted. When I pluck, you can see the twist in my wrist. It's definitely not comfortable and it doesn't particularly sound good. So you're just looking for as much fluidity as possible. Now I'm using a combination in most cases of my thumb on a bass string, which is going to be either string six, five, or four, and occasionally string three, and my index and middle fingers as a pair on either strings one and two, or two and three. Now my ring finger is sometimes coming into play I might pluck a chord that has the index and ring fingers together, which is a little more challenging. And one of the things you can do to prepare for this is take something simple like an E minor chord in your left hand, take these three fingers and rest them on these three strings. Notice the curl, right? So this knuckle is bent, this knuckle is bent, the tip segment knuckle is bent. These knuckles are essentially over the string. My arm is basically straight. Again, you do need to experiment. And if you're sitting like this, you see how the technique isn't really all that different. Probably the best thing you can do is just find the way that allows you to feel the most relaxed and get a sound out of the string without much motion. So I'm going to do this one this way, so you can see the hand position when I've got the guitar on my right leg. Simple exercise, holding an E minor chord, index middle ring are resting on 3, 2, 1. Your thumb, because it moves up and down, can easily reach any of these strings. And so I would start like this, thumb on string 6, on 5, on 4, index on 3 middle on two, ring on one, and then working with combinations, index and middle on one and two, index and middle on two and three, index and ring on one and three. This is a little more challenging, but middle and ring on one and two, and all three index middle ring on three, two, one. And when you practice these, take each one, repeat it a few times. So you might, here's index middle on one and two. Pluck, find it again. Pluck, find it again. And then maybe I move my hand over to two and three. Pluck, find it again. Pluck, find it again. Notice the movement inward and then the release back to a relaxed hand. Then we would add the thumb, so let's try this. Index middle on one and two, thumb is on string four, and I, put, and I play all three together. Thumb pushes down, fingers move in. Here's thumb on the third string with index middle on one and two. 
Here's thumb on the fourth string, index middle on two and three. And you see all the different possibilities here. And if you can just work through them in an organized way, say you take index middle ring and just play three strings and over, three strings and over, three strings and over, three strings and over, or index middle on one and two, thumb is on six, thumb is on five, thumb is on four, thumb is on three. You get the idea. So you're just working all the different possible combinations of fingers. And really it's an exploration more than anything else. You want to see what feels right. Some people will pluck with only these two fingers all the time. Some people use all three. Some people just use one. Some of the greatest finger style players that ever were. Say somebody like Doc Watson, the great uh, Carolina country blues and uh, could, he couldn't even say how many styles that he played, but very much known for the sort of Chet Atkins style of picking, what they call the Piedmont style. Played everything with one finger. Merle Travis, thumb pick and one finger, and did amazing things with that. So you'll see all kinds of idiosyncratic things. What I'm talking about here is starting with that, what I'm calling the orthodox technique, and then leaving it open to adaptation to fit your hands, your type of guitar, your type of style. So as I said, it's an exploration more than a very specific series of instructions. We just want to use the basic principles of staying relaxed, keeping the hand loose as a starting point. So I want to play this exercise for you now. And I'm going back to the classical position, also because it makes things a little easier on my left hand to make the reaches, but you can do it either way. And I'm going to walk through it like this relatively slow tempo. You should be practicing in the beginning really as slowly as you can. So maybe something like this. One, two, three, four. Now, if you're not following along on the PDF with the tab and the notes, definitely check that out if you don't have it. Say if you're finding this video on YouTube, then you can go to my website at NashvilleGuitarGuru.com, go to the articles section, and you will find this lesson linked and also a written lesson to go with it and close-up videos of the left and right hands and a tab download. So definitely go check that out if you don't have it already. And if you don't subscribe to my mailing list, there's a spot for you to sign up and do that, and then you'll get announcements when these are posted. I'm going to walk through this one more time. And I'll go ahead and move the guitar over so you can see the variation in the hand. But I want to talk about the chords, which are simple variations on chords you probably already know. This opening chord is an A minor, but I'm only holding the second and third strings. You would ordinarily strum an A minor like this. So all I'm doing is leaving out the fourth string note and moving that finger, that middle finger, over to the third string. In other words, only touching the notes I need. So simple A minor using index middle. I'm plucking string five, three, two. This next chord may also be familiar. It's an inverted G, probably be written as G slash B, or G over B. I'm using my middle finger on string five, pinky on string two, 
and I'm plucking this thumb index middle. Here's a simple C chord. Ordinarily, we would do this to strum, but I don't need all those notes. So I'm only holding the bass note, ring finger string five, fret three, and then plucking thumb index on three, ring on one. So we have this. And you practice that as slowly as you need to. If it's this, it's fine. And, and, remember, you're just trying to hit a target, so you go slowly enough that you can control it. Going on, this is a simple D minor. I'm just leaving out the second string note. So I'm just holding first string, first fret, third string, second fret, and plucking four, three, one. This is a simple G7, but I'm not even playing the bass notes. So I've got my index finger on that same first fret F and just plucking three, two, one. Here's our simple C chord again. Notice it's only one finger. So here's the first two measures. another D minor variation. Fourth string, ring finger on three, third string, middle finger on two, second string, pinky on three. So it's third fret, second fret, third fret. It's just an inversion of D minor. We've taken the F note that would be here, moved it down an octave to here. So simple D minor. Here's your familiar A minor shape, but I'm not strumming, I'm just plucking the inside strings, four, three, two. Then we move to a simple E. Again, here's the strummed E. Again, we don't need all those notes, so I'm holding string four, middle finger, second fret, string three, index finger, first fret, and plucking four, three, two for the simple E. And then here is a simple A, Again, it's like the A minor shape, but I'm not playing the note that makes it minor. I'm just playing the second fret of the fourth and third strings. So we have the E, three notes, and the A, three notes where I'm plucking strings five, four, three. Here's the second line, basically the same thing. Simple A minor, G over B, C, simple D minor, Here's another G7, but I'm just hitting different strings. Open fourth, open second, and fretted first fret of the first string. Here's a simple A minor, but again, this time missing notes in the middle. Index finger, second string, and I'm plucking open A, fifth, fretted second string, first fret, open E first. A minor, G over B, C, minor, G7, A minor. Here's a simple E again, index and middle, but I'm plucking four with thumb, three with index, one with ring. Then I'm adding my pinky on the second string third fret for a simple E7, and now going to a simple F, index, middle, ring on two, three, four, then a single A note, still part of the chord, E suspended, this is middle ring on strings four and three, second fret. I keep holding the middle finger, I replace the ring with the index on the first fret, and then I put that ring finger back, and this time pluck five, four, three. So check this out. This is the second half of the second line. E, E7, F, continuing to hold the F while you pluck one string, E suspended, plucking 4, 3, 2, E, again 4, 3, 2, A, 5, 4, 3. Moving on, another simple C chord, this time strings 5 and 2, combining the bass note 5th string with right hand index middle on 2 and 1, we do that twice. Now, an inverted C might be written as C slash E, 
basically we're just rearranging the notes. So this is middle finger on the fourth string, second fret, index on the second string, first fret, pinky on the first string, third fret. It's still a C chord. Watch this. There's a melodic change, but you still hear the C harmony. Here's our simple D minor, an open B, a simple A minor, just index middle on string two, string three. Here's that simple D minor again. Simple A minor, one note. Simple E, one note. Simple A. C, inverted. D minor, open B, simple A minor. D minor. This is a simple G7. I'm getting there by lifting my middle finger off the string, so I have now third fret on four, open three, third fret on two. So here's the D minor, lift the middle finger for G7. Simple C, this time on the middle strings of four, second fret, open third, two, first fret, then reaching for the bass note. This is the only time we've got all the fingers down that you would ordinarily use for C. So it's like this. Here's the next to the last measure, simple D minor, lift the middle, simple C, extend the ring finger for the bass note. Here's a simple E, really looks like an E7. I'm holding the middle finger on string 5, fret 2, the index finger on string 3, fret 1, and I'm plucking five, three, two, so it's still just an E chord. Add the low E bass and back to our simple A. So these are variations on familiar chords. It's actually a really good concept to know that if you know how to play a C chord and you've always done it like this, when you start plucking you find all these variations. It creates different sounds. One other thing I want to mention, and you don't necessarily have to worry about this, but you might have noticed that my thumb is moving around to stop strings. Say I do something like this. Those open strings are going to ring out, so I use my thumb sometimes to make sure that they don't. Here's the E suspended, going to the E hear all those notes ringing out. Now when I go to the A, I move my thumb over to string six to make sure it doesn't ring over. That's a subtlety that you don't necessarily need to worry about, but you might have noticed my thumb doing that as I played. So I'm going to play this one more time. I'll go back to this position. Play it up to tempo this time. So here's Renaissance Fair. Now, this is definitely somewhat challenging if you're new to fingerstyle, but even if you pick it apart and just practice a measure at a time, or a couple of measures, or a line, recognize that you're working with partial chords, recognize that all you need to do is find one or two strings, or three strings at a time, simple movements in the right hand, look at this as a long-term project if you need to. If you're a more comfortable player with the open chords and you've done some finger style, this will be a little less challenging, but the style might be different than what you're used to. 
And like I said before, plucking notes together is actually somewhat simpler than playing repeated patterns, so it really is a good way to get started. So have fun with it. I'll be following up with more fingerstyle exercises in lessons to come. Go to it, and I'll see you next time.